Folks, this one was legend. Wait for it. Dairy. There'll be happy holidays in Washington as the Redskins snap their six game losing streak. Now, this is where all the excitement will begin on Thursday, right here on hole number one. Tiger Woods ranked now 220th in the world. Now, your dad was a sports journalist and yes. still works in the industry. How did he kind of influence uh, your decisions to go into journalism? Now, Washington scored a point in every game but two throughout the month of December, and they continued riding that hot streak right in to the new year. Yeah, coming up in sports, I'll have a review of Turner Ashby's come from behind victory in the state semifinals in a game you don't want to miss. No need to wait for the fireworks on Saturday. Teddy, ow, you could have used that big stick. That's Calvin Coolidge knocking out Roosevelt in the presidential race. Nothing laissez-faire about that. Clint Robinson answering right back. Hey, Teddy. I got your stick. O'Day strikes out the side, which apparently is Kevin Pillar's bat's fault, taking his frustration out on the wood. And number one comes from the Mac attack. Hannah McDonald sending the shot into the student section. Scherzer carried a perfect game into the eighth. Pedro Alvarez tries knocking it through the shift, but Danny Esther knows and says, not today, my friend. New Market and Montezuma. The rain did fall, affecting the play, the field, and my hair, of course. I was actually um, just beginning high school. I was in ninth grade at the time. I turned on the news and found out that airplanes had struck the World Trade Center. He first came to us right as six weeks post injury, I think. And we were at Woodrow Wilson practicing at the time, and his mother was on the sidelines when I was talking to her, and he fell out of his chair right away. And she jumped, went to jump up, and I grabbed her and said, Just sit. And the guys went over, taught him how to get back up in his chair. Oh, there we go. Thank you. So, you know, I, I'm not too, too far from him. So, you know, I. It's, it's all about the, you know competing wherever you are, and, and that's what I was made to do. Woodrum on the play action fade, throws right down the seam, and is that intercepted? Yes, Marlowe's got another one. Yeah, because you, you always want to have be humble with yourself. You want to have pride in yourself. You want to have confidence. It's it's alright. I can hang on through parade laps. Uh, you're doing a great job, kid. Great job. Running, absolutely. It's where I feel at peace. It's where I feel joy. Um, it's what I can do to organize my thoughts. It's what I can do to prevent anxiety. And it's basically self-medicating. As our cameras rolled, his first response arrived. It's from 4,000? 4,000 Defense Pentagon, Pentagon Washington, Washington D.C. Thank you for your recent letter to, Se to Secretary of Defense Chuck H Hagel. Hagel. Currently, any disease, injury, or congenital condition associated with any part of the upper ex extremity. extremity that prevents satisfactory mm -hmm. performance of duty is disqualifying. It's all, it's all in the books. Everything's in the books. Films in the books. Everything's in the books. So, they were just waiting for that time. And now, your WHSV Sports. Well, if it wasn't official, it is now. I'll make the call. Steven Strasburg is no longer the Nationals' ace. Max Scherzer is. A week ago, he struck out 16 batters on his way to a one-hitter. Today, the fireballer had bigger things in mind. Bryce Harper back in the lineup tonight against the Pirates. How would his hammy hold up? Well, he had all the time he needed to round the bases here. Harper. Puts the Nats up on the board, one nothing with the solo home run, his 23rd of the year. But today was all about Max Scherzer, who recorded 10 strikeouts, getting Francisco Liriano here. Scherzer carried a perfect game into the eighth. Pedro Alvarez tries knocking it through the shift, but Danny Espinosa says, not today, my friend. We head to the ninth. Two outs, Scherzer goes inside of Jose Tabata and hits him. The perfect game is no more. The next man up is Josh Harrison, and you can mark it in your books as a C-O-C, -C, can of corn. Scherzer throws the Nationals' second no-hitter, joining Jordan Zimmerman on the exclusive list. Washington beats the Pirates 6-0. Scherzer has allowed just one hit in his last two games, both complete game shutouts. Coming in for the seventh, you hear the crowd going nuts. You know, everybody starts getting on their feet, starts cheering for all those two-strike counts. I'm telling you, that just pumps me up on the mound. The louder they get, the more I want to do it. And I just was able to go down there and get nasty and uh, just find a way to finish it out.
Love the Hershey syrup celebration. Orioles and Jays playing game two of a three-game series. This one's tied up at two in the eighth. Base is loaded for Toronto, but Darren O'Day works himself out of the bed he made. O'Day strikes out the side, which apparently is Kevin Pillar's bat's fault, taking his frustration out on the wood. Now to the ninth, Orioles up with runners on. Caleb Joseph taking his O for day and making something out of it. An RBI single scores J.J. Hardy, and the O's take a 3-2 to two lead. The next man up is the red-hot Manny Machado. Two doubles today, and this one is going to feel really good tonight. Baltimore jumping out to a three-run lead. The Orioles, they go on to win this one 5-3. to three. Well, hot off the press now, a game that finished up just moments ago. The winner here advancing to the College World Series final, and the Hoos wasted no time scoring against Florida. Matt Seiss, home run, puts Virginia up in the first. The game would go back and forth, tick-tock throughout. Remember how UVA beat Florida in game one on a sack fly? Well, it's tied at fourth, and Kenny Towns flares one in the right field. It's deep enough, and just like that, the Hoos will take the lead on the sack fly. It is five to four. Now to the ninth, two outs. Who's looking to finish off the Gators? The ground ball up the middle, and just like that, Virginia is back in the College World Series final. It's a rematch against last year's champion Vanderbilt. The Who's improbable run continues. Well, golf doesn't seem the same right now without the man threatening. This man, Tiger Woods, for the second time in his last three majors, Woods isn't around on moving day. Between no Tiger and a golf course drawing the ire of many pros and analysts, this year's U.S. Open is shaping up to be quite an interesting one. Jason Day is your leader after three rounds. Remember, he collapsed after his round yesterday. He had a solid afternoon despite missing this par putt. Day is four under, is one of a few on top. He isn't alone. Jordan Spieth had a bit of an up and down day. Five bogeys, but four birdies, including this beauty on three. He's a part of the four-way tie at the top. So here is your leaderboard. Joining Spieth and Day are Dustin Johnson and Braden Grace, all tied at four under. In fifth, Louis Oosthuizen. Had his best, had the day's best day at four under. He's tied with three others at one under. And Royal McElroy, he's four over for the tournament, tied in 25th. Well, we did get a little RCBL baseball action in tonight. Uh, New Market and Montezuma. The rain did fall, affecting the play, the field, and my hair, of course. Shockers up one early. Runners on for the Braves. Zach Roberts drives one through the infield. Two runs will score, getting Montezuma. The two to one lead. The Braves, they would have to win this one late tonight, though, on a ninth inning walk off. They beat Newmarket 10 to 9. Nice, nice. Even in the rain. You yeah, know, even in the rain. I was, I was really surprised we had some baseball. Most games, all but a couple games, I think Broadway and Clover Hill also played. And then that new, new, new Montezuma New Market. But uh, most everything else rained out tonight. All right, thanks, Andrew. Yep. More news and weather next. Like most drivers, Timmy Tyrell teamed into racing at a young age in go-karts. And it didn't take long for his rides to become bigger, fatter, and much faster. Well, I was at four at the time, and uh, my dad take, took me to a local go-kart track on Dominion Speedway. They were racing go-karts on Sunday. And he asked, um, would you like to get into it? Would you like to drive? <laughs> yes, that is Timmy Tyrell, better known as Mini. And he's only 10 years old, competing in a sport against drivers that are more than four times his age. Many has won more than 50 races and is the youngest driver to run a late model. But success doesn't always equal respect. I'm very confident in his skill set and his driving abilities and his control. A lot of people will argue with me and say, no way should a 10 year old be out there. Um, every step of the way, he's proven them wrong. I, I've always learned you don't want to be going on and on about yourself and bragging, you know, because you, you always want to have, be humble with yourself, you want to have pride in yourself, you want to have confidence. It's, it's alright, I can hang on for eight laps. Uh, you're doing a great job, kid, great job. For Timmy, though, wins are often secondary. His true passion is helping kids fight cancer, a topic that strikes a chord with him. It was painful, you know. Because you, you can feel it, you know, it's just, it's awful. And I can't really describe it, put it into words because it's so bad. 
Minnie was six years old when he found out that his best friend, Ella Day, had a brain tumor. I'm trying to explain that to a six-year-old, what is cancer? And I explained to him, you know, she was going to be losing her hair, that it was, it was something really bad inside of her, and she was going to be very sick, but hopefully uh, she would come out on the end okay. And he just said, you know what, if I can make her feel better today, then I've, then I've done something. One night while Ella and her family visited, Minnie was playing when he heard something. I overheard the parents talking about, you know, expenses, and he had a hard time with, um, you know, money, because he had to miss work to take care of, you know, Ella. And uh, I said, that, that's not right, you know, that nothing, no family should ever have to go through that. That night inspired Minnie's mission. I talked to my dad that night. I said, I want to do something about that. And at the time, I'd been racing go-karts. And I said, I'd like to raise money by racing my go-kart. Timmy started by raising a few dollars here and there. In four years, he's raised more than $270,000 for pediatric cancer research. You know, he was six, the, the attention span of a six-year-old. I thought two months and you know, he would be off to something else, and he has never wavered. Four days to the kickball tournament. Every September, he holds a kickball tournament in partnership with KickIt.org. NASCAR superstar Jeff Gorin matches every dollar Minnie raises. Two years ago, they spent the afternoon together. That was awesome. He's the nicest guy ever. He, he came down, he greeted me like I knew him for 100 years, you know. But I was very lucky that day because as people only get to spend like three minutes just talking to this guy, you spend a full two hours with him. Annually, Timmy raises about $30,000 at his tournament. And while he gives speeches and holds fundraisers for his cause, one of his favorite ways to raise money is still through his donation jar that he carries each week at the racetrack. I, I've met a lot of kids who are like, can I put a dollar in and stuff? And that's just, that, that's special to me. That's something that just makes my mind like, wow, you know. They want to help too. It's not just me, you know. Today, Ella Day is cancer free. But each year, about 15,000 kids are diagnosed with cancer. As long as there's still no cure, Timmy will burn rubber to help another. From Shenandoah, Andrew Clay, WHSV Sports.